Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Today we are going to start first session of our lecture week number six. Before to start our lecture six, just we will take a quick overview of our lecture number five. Okay. So in lecture number five, we start our discussion from thread, and we said a thread is a lightweight process. This is also a process, but this is lightweight process. and it consist of thread id program counter register set and stack like process thread also have these four component thread id program counter register set and stack then we have seen that we have single threaded and multi threaded process okay in single threaded process a one process is di uh, divided into only one thread but in multi threaded process one process may have more than one thread as it is shown in this example that this is single threaded process okay so there are five main components of each thread code data files stack and registers okay if you see this multi threaded process that this also have five component but code data and files which are common which are shared by each thread currently this process have three threads and code data and files which are shareable remaining register and stack they have separate then why we use multi threaded uh, programming because we have some benefits what are those for, uh, benefits so we have five these main benefits responsiveness resource sharing economy scalability less communication overhead so what is responsiveness it is increase the responsiveness to the user okay so if we are using multi threaded programming so it will increase the response ratio to the user if we compare with the single threaded model okay also the second benefit we have discussed the resource sharing the sharing the memory and resources to the process it is uh, very easy and they because they belong to same process so it's very easy to uh, share the different resources then the multi threaded programming in multi threaded process they are more economical than single threaded process as we have given one example that creating a process is about 30 times slower than creating a thread in solaris operating system okay so because we have to create thread we have to manage the thread so creation and managing management of thread uh, sorry process is more expensive than thread scalability because nowadays we have more than one uh, processor on our system so multi threaded programming is more better than single threaded because in this way we can execute more than one thread at a same time then less communication overhead the communication overhead will be less because these threads belong to same process so they can easily communicate with each other they can pass data they can send message to each other very easily okay so these are the five benefits that we discuss in lecture number 5 then we have seen we have two type of system single core and multi core system okay so currently most of the system that we are getting these are multi core system we have seen then thread execution on single core system and thread execution on multiple core system okay so uh, in term of time the multiple core system and thread execution it is efficient and it's less time consuming that uh, than single core system then we have seen uh, thread library thread library helps us to create and to manage the threads so for creation and to manage a thread it is very good Okay. So, so it it help us for creating and destroying thread, passing messages and data between threads, scheduling thread execution, and saving and restoring the thread context. Then we have seen that each process exists within the constant uh, thread. We have uh, each process have a kernel thread. Okay. So kernel thread is supported and managed by operating system. Then we have seen. some multi threading model many to one model we have seen that in many to one model many user level threads are mapped to only one kernel thread and 
uh, the main disadvantage that we have seen here in many to one model that if one thread is blocked then whole process will block also if we have multiprocessor system then it's not possible to execute more than one thread at the same time only one thread we can execute if we are using uh, many to one model in one to one model for each user level thread we have separate kernel thread and uh, the here the main difference between many to one model and one to one model is that in many to one we have only one kernel here we have the number of kernel are according to number of the user threads okay so if we have three user thread there will be three kernel thread if we have four user thread four kernel but this model is better than many to one model because if one thread is blocked it will not affect the other tra thread other they will work also this better that if we have multi processor system then we can execute more than one thread at the same time then at the end we have discussed many to one many model in many to many model the uh, number of uh, user level threads are mapped to smaller or equal number of kernel threads so kernel threads is each thread did not have separate kernel threads but they have mapped with the many kernel threads suppose here each four threads user threads are mapped to these kernel uh, kernel thread this model this model is more better than uh, previous both many to one and one to one because if one uh, thread is blocked suppose this is blocked it will not affect any other three thread and kernel kernel will schedule another thread for execution okay so at the end what is the conclusion many to many model is better than many to one and one to one model so this was our lecture number 5 so today we are going to start our lecture number 6 okay so lecture number 6 belongs to our course learning outcome number 3 describe various algorithm process thread scheduling synchronization deadlock and virtual memory okay so process we are discussing from few lecture process threads now the next is process scheduling because if you remember when we discuss process state diagram then we have seen from ready state to running state we have scheduler scheduler is making schedule which process we have to execute which process will be moved from ready state to running state so scheduling is the key concept in multitasking multi programming operating system and real time operating system design because schedule if your schedule is good everything will be good but if schedule is not good then it can affect the system every day we are making schedule so what we have to do today we are making schedule for yearly basis okay so also it is very important in our life in our daily life to make a good schedule also it is very uh, important that our system have a very good schedule for process execution what is schedule scheduling is refer the way processor are, are assigned to run on available cpus because we know that we have more than one process currently running in our system okay so of course we need to make a one schedule we need to make a one plan that which process we have to execute first which second third and so on okay since they are they are typically more process running than the available cpus as i discussed that uh, we have limited number of cpus processors but we have many process so how we can run all these process so this is uh, we have some software that is called scheduler or dispatcher okay so they are making some schedule for process but so how it is achieving by switching the cpu among the process if you remember we discuss cpu switch from process to process in lecture week number 4 i think okay how the cpu switching from one process to another 
process. So uh, this is also time sharing. Concept of time sharing is here that switching the CPU. Okay. So in this way we can make the computer more productive. More productive. So what is scheduling? To make a schedule. This is the way processor, processes are assigned to run on the available CPUs because we have limited number of CPUs. We have many processes. So how to execute all process? So that's why we need to make one schedule. We need to make one plan. Okay. So this is called process scheduling. Okay. We we have some algorithms that we will discuss in this course that are called scheduling algorithms. Okay. So before to move to the scheduling algorithm, we need to know some basic information. The first one is CPU burst time. What is CPU burst time? This is the amount of time the process use the processor before it is no longer ready. That this is amount of time. How much time a process need processor? Mean how much time he need to finish his work? We have one process. Of course, this process have some uh, objective, some duty to perform. Okay. So, how much time he need to finish his work? That is called bust time, CPU bust time. How much time he need to complete his work? Okay. So, this is bust time. So, uh, try to understand this because we will use bus time in our scheduling algorithms. We will so solve some examples. So that is very important that we need this. Okay. Another, so we have two type of process, IO bound process and CPU bound process. So we will discuss what is IO bound process. IO mean input output. Okay. The process that perform lot of IO operations. The, those process, those have the input output operations are more than the computation. So these type of process are called I.O. bound process. Each I.O. operation is followed by short CPU burst to process the I.O. and then more I.O. happen. That we have input output operations are more than the computation, calculation operations. Okay, so this type of process is called I/O bound process. Okay, if in opposite CPU bound process, these process that perform lot of computation and do little I/O. Okay, no, so uh, now you understand that difference between the I/O bound and CPU bound. That in I/O bound, I/O operation will be more, computation operation will be minimum. But in CPU bound process, computation will be more, I/O operation will be minimum. Okay. So scheduling criteria. Whenever we are selecting any algorithm, then some criteria should be in our mind. We are whenever we are going to purchase anything from market, some criteria is in our mind. That how much money I have, how much quality. I need so many things that is in our mind. Same way, whenever we are selecting annual, any algorithms, then the something, some criteria should be in our mind to select any algorithm because the different CPU scheduling algorithm have different properties. Okay, so we need to study those properties, what the properties one algorithm have, and what is our criteria. Okay, then accordingly we will choose the particular algorithm. Okay, so uh, what are these criteria? First one is CPU utilization. Okay, so we will discuss all these criteria one by one. What is CPU utilization? Okay, second criteria is throughput. Then we have turnaround time. The number fourth is waiting time and fifth and last one is response time okay so this whenever we are selecting any algorithm we need to keep in our mind these five components that cpu utilization throughput turnaround time waiting time and response time okay 
so what is cpu utilization as its name shows utilization how much we are utilizing our cpu so what is our objective objective is to keep the cpu as busy as possible this is our objective that how we can make our cpu busy okay this is our main objective so this uh, busyness it can be from 0 to 100 percent okay how much cpu is busy okay this is utilization that whenever we are selecting any algorithm we will check that this algorithm is making our cpu busy or not if it is making our cpu busy what is the percentage from 0 to 100 percent which uh, this how much it is doing now if if i give you some example let's suppose that we have three algorithm that i say that is algorithm one then we have another algorithm two then we have algorithm three all these three are scheduling algorithm let's suppose these are scheduling algorithm we say that algorithm one maximum it is making our cpu busy 32% okay algorithm 2 it is making our cpu busy 34.5% suppose and algorithm 3 it is making our cpu busy 27% so here we will check that which algorithm is making more busy to our cpu so clearly it is that this is 30 algorithm 1 this is 32% algorithm 2 this is 34.5% algorithm 3 this is 27% so which algorithm we will choose in this case this will be in term of this first criteria 34.5% the algorithm number 2 because it is making our cpu as busy as possible that more if we compare these algorithm later if we get another algorithm suppose algorithm number 4 and it is making our uh, cpu busy suppose 48% then we will select algorithm number 4 not algorithm number 2 understand the utilization this is our first criteria that which algorithm is making our cpu more busy this is our first thing that we need to check utilization how much we are utilizing our cpu so this is our first thing the utilization then throughput what is the meaning of throughput that throughput is the number of processes that are completed per time unit called throughput that which process is completing how many sorry which algorithm is completing how many process in unit time this time can be suppose 10 milliseconds 1 second 10 minute 1 day 10 days so we have to define one unit time and then we will see that which algorithm is completing how many process okay now again if i give you some one example so which algorithm you will uh, select suppose this is our uh, algorithm one algorithm two algorithm 3 so if i say that this algorithm 1 it is completing 7 process in 10 seconds so time unit we have defined 10 uh, second and algorithm 2 it is completing 5 process and algorithm 3 it is completing 9 process so in this case which algorithm is best in term of throughput this is algorithm number Three, because it is completing nine process. So how many process we are completing in unit time? Okay, so this is called number of process that are completed per unit time, called throughput. Okay, so the the process who is completing more process, uh, sorry, algorithm who is completing more process will be better in this case. Okay, so this is our second criteria whenever we have. many algorithms scheduling algorithm if we have to choose the best one 
this is our second criteria that we need to keep in our mind so what is our first criteria that is utilization how much we are utilizing our cpu what is our second criteria throughput that how many process algorithm is completing in unit time okay so number 3 we have turn around time okay so the what is turn around time this is the interval from time of submission of process to time of completion so when we submitted the process and when the process is completed the measurement of time between submission to completion is called turn around time okay so because of course this turn around time is sum of period spent waiting to get the memory waiting in ready queue executing on cpu and doing io operations now we have five states we in state uh, diagrams ready state waiting state running state these three states are very important okay so how much time when we submitted the process and when he finishes work of course this will be the combination of all the time when he was in ready state when he was in waiting state to get some io or for any other uh, resource and when he was in running state okay so combination to sum of all these time will called turn around time okay now uh, if if i give you an again here one example suppose we have three algorithms algorithm algorithm 1 okay algorithm 2 and then we have suppose algorithm 3 we have given same process to these algorithms and this algorithm 1 have taken suppose 30 seconds to finish that process algorithm 2 he has taken 29 second to finish that work and algorithm 3 he has taken 34 seconds to finish that process to finish the execution of this process and this time 30 second for algorithm 1 29 second for algorithm 2 and 34 second for algorithm 3 is combination of all the times that he spend waiting in ready uh, ready queue in waiting state in running state or anything what he has done from submission to completion this is the time so if why which algorithm will be best in term of turn around time okay so here the process who will get less time to finish work that will be more better suppose algorithm 2 because he is taking 29 seconds algorithm 1 is taking 30 seconds algorithm 3 is taking 34 second so here clearly it is shown that algorithm 2 is better than algorithm 1 and algorithm 3 so what is time turn around time this is the interval from time of submission of a process to time of completion when we have submitted process and when it is completed so these are the two component time of submission time of completion okay so the algorithm who will take less time that will be better than any other algorithm okay so this is our third criteria whenever we are selecting algorithm scheduling algorithm for our problem then we have to keep in mind turn around time so what we discussed before first two that is utilization how much cpu we are utilizing and i given one example here algorithm 2 is better because he is utilizing our cpu 34.5% and second criteria we have throughput the number of process that are complete completed per time unit is called throughput the algorithm who will complete more process will be better than other process and here in this example we have seen the algorithm number 3 is better than algorithm number 1 and 2 and then third criteria we have seen turn around time this is the time 
measurement of the time from submission to completion and we, in this example we have seen that algorithm 2 have taken 29 second which is less than the time taken by algorithm 1 and algorithm 3 so we can say that algorithm 2 is better than algorithm 1 and 2 in term of turn around time okay so our fourth criteria is waiting time so waiting time is the sum of the period spend waiting in ready queue okay so uh, how much time he spend in ready queue and waiting for processor waiting to move to uh, running state okay so this is called waiting time okay so we have to calculate the waiting time of the algorithm that uh, which algorithm will be best who is taking less waiting time okay now again if i give you one example here also that we have uh, suppose three algorithm algorithm one algorithm two algorithm three and suppose the waiting time for in algorithm one is suppose four in algorithm 2 it is 6 in algorithm 3 maybe this is 5.5 seconds so in this case which algorithm will be best this algorithm algorithm 1 will be best because he is taking the less time if we compare with algorithm 2 and algorithm 3 okay so waiting time always waiting time should be less if waiting time is less then we say this is very good okay now suppose if you are going to pizza hut for buying pizza okay now you after giving order you need to wait how much time you will wait 10 minutes 20 minutes 30 minutes so the waiting time if waiting time will be less that pizza hut or that pizza shop will be better we say it's very good because time is very important time is money okay so waiting time uh, we need to calculate if uh, waiting time is less then we say that algorithm is best okay so in this example algorithm 1 is best because waiting time is less as compared to waiting uh, algorithm 2 and algorithm 3 so our last criteria is response time okay so what is response time the measure of time from submission of request until first response produced okay so there is a difference between waiting time and response time waiting time is calculation of all the time he wait okay but response time is from time of submission to until the first response produce For maybe the process it will be in ready state when it will be moved to running state first time that waiting time that time how much is that time maybe after uh, going to the running state maybe he again he move back to the ready state after some time maybe time interval there is an interrupt time slice is expired and he comes back to the ready state again the com this does not matter in response time in waiting time we will calculate all the time okay how much time he wait but in response time from time of submission to until get the first response this is called response time okay now if again if i give you one example that you went to pizza hut for to buy one pizza so what you have to do first you have to stand in a queue maybe before you there are some people they are waiting to give your order so, so to, to give your order you need to wait in a queue okay so when you reach to the pizza hut from that time to giving order because that giving order this is first response from the salesman so that is called response time but waiting time is after giving order maybe you spend in a queue five minutes to give order okay and then after giving order maybe you wait another 10 minutes to get your pizza so 5 plus 10 15 minutes this is your waiting time but response time is what 
when you went there and you wait in the queue after 5 minute when you reach to the counter to the salesman salesman to give order that is your response time first response when you get the first response so this this is the fifth criteria that we have, we need to keep in mind whenever we are selecting to any algorithm for scheduling okay so uh, now you understand we have five different criteria so which algorithm will be the best scheduling algorithm okay in choice of best scheduling algorithm it is desirable that to maximize two criteria cpu utilization and throughput and to minimize turnaround time waiting time and response time okay so understand because utilization if the if you go back and see the example that i given in each criteria you will see the utilization the algorithm which is utilizing more cpu that is better so need to maximize the utilization throughput the algorithm who is completing more process in a unit time that is better than the other algorithm also turnaround time turnaround time as we discussed this time from submission to completion of process the algorithm who is taking less time to complete a process that is better so it means minimize waiting time the process algorithm who has less waiting time to complete a process that is better so it means waiting time we need to minimize in the same way we need to minimize the response time because the process who will get early response that algorithm will be the best algorithm okay so uh, we will stop here so in next second session we will start our scheduling algorithms so uh, just we will take a quick overview what we discussed today that we start our discussion from process scheduling what is process scheduling this is a way the process are assigned to run this is a way how we can assign our process to run for execution okay so because schedule schedule making schedule this is very important okay so uh, we have some uh, something that is related to bus time the amount of time the process use the processor how much time he need to complete his work 5 seconds 10 seconds 20 seconds how much time total he need the cpu then we have seen io bound process and cpu bound process and we differentiate between them that io bound process they have more io operations and less computation but in cpu bound process the io operations are less computation is high okay then whenever we are going to select any process we need to keep in mind these five components utilization throughput turnaround time waiting time and response time and we have de uh, defined what is utilization the keep the cpu as busy as possible as i given example we have to check which algorithm is making our cpu more busy that algorithm will be best okay so the busy percentage will be from 0 to 100% so we have to find out which algorithm is making cpu more busy then we have throughput the number of process that are completed per unit time called throughput the algorithm which is completing more process in less time that will be better algorithm suppose here i given one example we have three algorithm algorithm 1 is completing seven process suppose in 10 second algorithm 2 is completing five process in uh, 10 second and algorithm 3 is completing nine process in 10 second so which algorithm will be best algorithm number 3 then third criteria is turn around time this is the uh, measurement of time from submission of process to, until to complete the process so this is called the time turn around time so here i given one example that algorithm 1 it is taking 10 seconds to complete 
Algorithm 2, it is taking 29 seconds to complete the same process and algorithm 3, it is taking 34 seconds to complete process. So which algorithm will be best? Algorithm 2 will be the best in this case. Okay. So this is fourth criteria that we have to keep in mind whenever we are selecting algorithm, scheduling algorithm. Then number fourth criteria that is waiting time. This is the measurement of the time of where that it will spend waiting in ready queue. How much time he has spent and I given one example that we have algorithm 1 it is taking 4 seconds, algorithm 2 it is put the process in waiting 6 seconds, algorithm 3 he put the process waiting for 5.5 .5 seconds. So which algorithm will be best who is, whose waiting time is less? Suppose algorithm 1 is taking 4. If we compare with algorithm 2 and 3 so uh, algorithm 1 is the best choice in term of waiting time. Then the fifth one and last criteria that we have discussed that is response time. That uh, response time that is the time from submission of a request until first response. Okay. So there is a difference between waiting time and response time. Waiting time is sum of all the time he, he wait okay, on different occasions but resp response time is time from submission until he get the first response. Okay. So these are the five components that we need to keep in mind whenever we are selecting any algorithms okay, and from these alg uh, five components are five criteria which algorithm will be the best that is have to maximize CPU utilization and throughput. Okay, so these two things if any algorithm it is maximizing it is increasing then that algorithm is best or and also the algorithm which is minimizing these three things turnaround time, waiting time and response time. Okay. So, uh, in selection of algorithm, we have, we need to understand all these criteria and we need to keep in mind whenever we are selecting any algorithm, any scheduling algorithm. Okay, so in next session, we will start our, uh, we will start the, some scheduling algorithm. So, if you have any question, so you can send me email or you can visit my office through uh, during my office hours. Okay. So see you in second session of our lecture week number 6.